On today's show, we're going to be talking about the FJ Westcott Eye Lighter sitting right over there using our model, Jakari, sitting right over there. Let's get the show on the road. Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live three times a week show here on YouTube at youtube.com slash photojoseph every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9.30 a.m. Pacific. And we talk about all kinds of things, camera, photo, video, live streaming related. Basically, if it's got a camera on it, it is fair game for the show. Today, we're talking about the FJ Westcott Eye Lighter. This is not a new product. You see it over there. We're going to get a little tour of it. It's not necessarily new, but it's really cool. And I finally got my hands on one for a little while on loan from uh, my friends at Westcott. Thank you very much, gentlemen. And uh, I'm excited to show it to you. We have brought in a lovely model, Jakari. Just Jakari in the background there. We'll be introducing her again in a little bit. She's going to be uh, our model today while we play with the light. But before we put her on camera and show how it works, I'm going to explain a little bit about how it works Technically, I guess that sort of makes sense. See so what's going on in the chat room this morning. There are all kinds of people. Ryan Green saying it's fixed. He's talking about the intro thing. I had to do a workaround. I still haven't actually fixed it, but that's okay. I know how to make it not happen anymore. Uh, greetings, everybody. Everybody calling in from all over the world. We have viewers in Nepal that are watching live. How cool is that? I think that is just the neatest thing. Um, before we get into the show too much, because I'm going to be out there most of the time, I want to throw out a couple of quick little shout outs, and then we'll jump into the techie stuff because I may not come back to here until the very end. Uh, first one is, remember I'm doing the live training for the PhotoApps.Expert channel, uh, PhotoApps.Expert site, and doing live training on photos right now. So earlier in the week, we did a show on extensions. That was I think yesterday or day before, something like that. We did a show on extensions. Next week, we're doing one on curves. The cool thing about the curves class, and this is why I'm bringing this up here especially, is even though I'm going to be in the Photos app, I'm going to be doing an overall education on curves and how they work and how to use them and all kinds of fun stuff. And so if even if you're not using photos, this will apply if you're using Photoshop or Lightroom or Capture One or whatever you're using, curve as a curve as a curve. So we're going to be exploring that. That'll be coming up then, be kind of fun. Hopefully you guys will enjoy that. Also, don't forget if you are a GH5 shooter, to be sure to grab the GH5 training, go to gh5training.com or if you are a lynda.com or LinkedIn training subscriber, paid subscriber, you can view the training there as well at no additional cost, which is kind of fun and kind of nice. So um, there's that. That's enough of the pitching for today. Let's get on with the show, shall we? Ryan, why don't you come on out here, jump on the other camera, and uh, we're going to walk over here and start exploring how this thing works. i got to grab my switcher, and I haven't done this part in a while, and I still don't have wireless earbuds. I've got to, that's one of those things I'm just going to have to sort out one of these days, but not today. All right. Ryan, are you on? Ryan, oh, there he is. He's working his way out there. Let's uh, switch over to the studio camera, and see, I no longer have, there we go, there it is. All right. So... I'm going to spend a little time talking about this first before we get you up here so you can still relax for a little. All right, here's the idea. Um, hold that, would you? Thank you. <laughs> Got to put it somewhere. Here's the idea. You've got a reflector that is, as you can clearly see, curved. It's a big, nice, huge, sweeping curve. The idea here is instead of having a flat reflector, like let's say this guy here, which if you're using a flat reflector, you would either have to have an assistant holding it or ask your model to hold it, which is generally crappy. And if you really wanted to make it look good, you'd have to ask them to curve it. And you're like, no, no, curve it more, curve it less. And you're trying to get them to do this. And then, of course, their arms are out like this. And it's you know, obviously not ideal. So the idea behind this thing is that you have it on a stand, clearly. It is self Sustaining, that makes sense. It's just sitting there on its own. I uh, don't need anybody to hold it. It is has this natural curve in it. It's also angled forward. So you see how, here how it's kind of tilted forward so that the light is bouncing up into your subject. So if you're sitting like this, the light's going to come down and bounce up into their face. Really easy to, to understand how that would work, right? So when you're setting it up, there's two things that you want to keep in mind when you're setting it up. And that's really all that matters. And everything else is just, you know, do it however you like. They say, and they, by they I mean Westcott, says that the ideal distance from your subject's face to the center of the eyeliner is about 30 inches. Give or take arm length, so when you're setting up your model, you want it to be about like that. That's it, pretty straightforward. You can raise it up, so that it comes with its own little stand. Um, I think it came with that stand. Actually, I don't remember now if that's my stand or not. Anyway, you could bring it up here, but then it's really going to kind of be shining up at the top of the head. It's probably not ideal. I've seen some shoots. I was looking on YouTube the other night for um, videos about it. There's a lot of videos around this thing. So, uh, you know, if you like this one, go watch some other ones. There's tons of them out there. 
And someone had taken it off of the stand entirely. They laid it down on the grass. Model was laying down on the grass, and he was using this to kind of wrap light around their head. All kinds of cool uses for it. The idea is that it's just a reflector that is curved and will wrap light around as well as bouncing it in. Now, if you're using it in a quite standard configuration here, now let's see if I can get, because I don't have the right light on yet, but if you're using kind of a standard configuration like this, you're going to get a, a catch light that has a little bit of a curve to it, which is really neat. You know, the catch light in a model's eyes is a really important part of photography and figuring out where that catch light is and what they look like and whether you're going to have one or two or three catch lights and the shape of them. You know, if you're shooting through a rectangular softbox or an octabox or a, a round umbrella, that all changes the shape of the catch light. So this gives you a sweeping arch of a, of a catch light. It's really kind of cool. So that's how that works. So with that said, Jakari, you're up. I'll take that from your hands. Come on up here. And, yep, you're just about right there is good. So <laughs> go ahead and put you here. Now I'm going to turn on this light up here. So you get a little light shining on. So essentially, now because I am shooting with constant light here, all the light in the room is going to be affecting the exposure here, right? This is not a, uh, I'm not shooting with a strobe, so we're not going to have just one single light source. The main light source, though, is this one here. So we've got a little bit of ambient light plus this. This works beautifully with strobes. If you saw, well, of course, you saw the title card that came up. That was shot with strobes. And if you look closely at that title card, you'll see that there are some clear differences in the shadowing under the chin and under the eyes, whereas the eyeliner comes in and fills that in. So that's, of course, what we're going to be doing here today. So uh, let's see here. Let's start. Actually, I'm going to get rid of this thing. Let's just take this out. And I want you to look at, I'm going to try not to knock your car over there. So I've got this one light. We got to run. Got the thing. Eh, don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> so got one light on her, one main light. It's clearly pointing down at her, so we're going to get some shadowing under her nose. Some of that's being filled in just by the ambient light in the room. But let me just bring this in a little bit closer here, and we'll switch over to the camera view. You know what I need to do is have a stand for this. That would be a clever idea. Oh, and aha, I also need to hook this camera up to the switcher. kind of forgot to do that after the timer was over. All right. Sure that's coming up live there, and we are, there we go, we are good to go. All right, let us switch through to the camera view. There we go, let's focus on it, that'd be a good start. Super, so there we go. So there, that is without the eyeliner. That is just one light on her, so you can see what the lighting situation looks like right now. I am going to, let's actually bring that a little bit darker, it's a little bit hot. Let's take the, eh, about right there. So. What am I shooting at? ISO 400, 800 for a second, F1.2. I'm shooting with the Noctricon lens, by the way. So if you are a fan of the lens or if you don't know anything about the lens, do be sure to uh, check the video out that we did. Last week was that? We'll link to it up here. I think it was just last week. We did a video around the Noctricon. Beautiful lens. That's what I'm using today. The F1.2 is the 42.5 millimeter F1.2, like a Noctricon for the Lumix. Oh, it's a really long name. Anyway, just watch the video it's right there. Okay. Um, that's that. All right, let's go ahead back to the camera so you can see through my camera here. And I'm going to go ahead and bring the highlighter in and go ahead and stay right where you are. Oops, step back in where you were. There you go. I'm going to bring this in. And very quickly here, you should see the difference. So take a look under her chin, under her eyes as I pull it out and bring it back in. <laughs> Beautiful smile. Hello, Jakari. Oh, I don't think we introduced her properly. This is Jakari. Best Hi. Jakari. Hi. I'm Jakari. <laughs> we'll put her Instagram down below uh, so you can follow her on Instagram, which is always welcome, of course. And that's basically it. So let's, let's just go ahead and get a couple shots like this, and then I'm going to play with the light a little bit more. So we're obviously shooting in color right now. You can see what that shot looks like. Looking great. Really nice. Under the chin light in there. Beautiful. Get a little bit closer in here. Focus that. Focus on her. There we go. Very nice. Good, Jakari. Looking good there. Beautiful. And one of the things that I really like about this is, let's do this. Let's go into black and white mode. And this, I think, looks really cool. Go ahead and look into the lens here for me. There you go. Nice. Perfect. Kind of a high key look. Let's overexpose it a little bit. Get a little bit brighter in there, a little bit higher key. Nice smile. There we go. Perfect. And it's a little bit too hot. Let's bring it down a little bit there. Looking good. You can really see how this just filling in the light under her chin. Let me, let me take that out of there again, take the eyeliner out. And we'll do some without it one more time. So you can see again the difference. So there we go. A little stills there. Perfect. You really see, so as I hold on that frame, actually give me one more good smile there. There we go. Perfect. You see under her chin there, we've definitely got a bit more shadowing going on. So that's one of the, well, the primary benefit of this thing. That's what this does. 
oops, bring my studio back up. There we go. That's what it does. It gives you that nice fill underneath. And if you look closely on there, you'll see some of the catch light in her eyes. We're not super close to her on the shots. I don't know if you can see that, but it's there. Now, I'm going to just play with the lighting a little bit more. I have another light that I'm going to add as a backlight. Charlie, why don't you put on that coat that you have? And I'm going to put this light right behind her. Just have kind of a fun little backlight. So now we're we're going from a single light, which I know it's kind of kind of a two multi-light setup because of all the other lights, but basically call it a single light. Now adding a second light in here. If I can figure out how to turn this on. Somewhere in here there is a switch. There it is. Switch. Let's bring it up not too high. And let's see here. I will. I'll move you. I'm gonna leave the light there and I'll have you reposition if needed. And let's bring back to the camera view here. There we go. Uh, step this way just a tiny bit. Perfect, there you go. Okay, let me move the camera. That's what we want, there we go. Okay, chin up a little bit, nice big smile. Perfect, there we go, nice. Now that's again without the eyeliner. So you can see a little bit of shadowing under her eyes, definitely under her chin. So now let's eliminate that. Let's go ahead and get that eyeliner back into here. Can you really bring that under? Now one of the other things that you can do, actually just step out of frame for me just for a moment here. It's a little bit hard to do as the photographer, but as the model, and you can always ask your model, if your model can see, are we not on that camera? <laughs> I guess we should be on that camera. There we go. Now we're on that camera? Yeah. Oh, I am on that camera. Yeah, no. Oh, well, I don't know what he's talking about. I was looking at that camera. I was looking at that camera. Ryan. All right, so when your, your model is here, the light bouncing off of this should be hitting them in the eyes, obviously, but they should see it, right? They should see a really bright reflection on here. That's your indicator that the lighting is in the right place. So if you stand here as the photographer and you stand where the model is, you can verify, yep, the light's in a good place. Or you can go, oh, you know what? It's, it's not. I need to move the eye lighter or move my light. But that's an indicator. When you see a big, huge, very bright sweep of light on the eye lighter, you know that your light is in a good position for your model. All right, go ahead and step back in, Jakari. And let me go back to the camera. And let's see what we've got. So back up just a touch here. Take like the tiniest of steps this way. Just tiny, tiny. There, oh, too much. Go back a little. There it is. Perfect. All right, nice. Okay, nice big smile. Look at the camera. There we go, and do like a, give me a pose on the hands on the shoulders. There we go, on the hips, nice. Hands on the shoulder. Hands on the shoulder, I didn't mean that, I meant on the hips. There we go, perfect. Let me take the down a little bit, make it a little bit darker. Nice big smiles there. Nice, perfect, perfect, beautiful. There we go. So you get the idea there. You get this really cool fill on there. Bring it in, the back line, and there's a nice little touch. I think that's kind of fun to bring that in. And, uh, and that's all there is to it. Really simple product. It does a simple job, does it very, very well, and just really brings that in and adds a unique look to your portraits, frankly. I think that if you are a primary, a primarily a portrait photographer, you do a lot of portraits, this is the kind of thing that will definitely give you a unique look. If you've got another photographer in the area you're competing with, they're not using one of these, bring this in, you're gonna add that little extra pop to your images that you know I think could maybe get you some extra work. I don't know, see what happens. All right, let's go back over to the main camera here. Thank you very much, Jakari, appreciate your time here. And let's go back to this, and we, we're gonna wrap this thing up. I'm gonna turn off those lights here because those are really distracting in the shot. All right, so let's see what you guys think here. Um, I'm going to pull the comments back up, see what you guys think about this. And also, I didn't tell you this, it comes with a little case here. So it folds, I know it, it's huge, right? It looks huge. I guess I could have broken that down for a little bit, but why is Siri talking to me? You be quiet. Um, this comes apart, these two curves come apart, and you end up with four primary pieces that fit into this case. So even though it looks enormous, it looks like something would be really hard to move around, it does close down into this small case here. So let's see here, tell me in the chat, and if you're not watching live, tell me in the comments, are you using one of these? Have you used one of these? Do you wanna use one of these? Does it look like something that would be awesome for your, uh, your studio assembly? Or as I just pointed out, because it can go into this nice little portable thing, you can take this anywhere and shoot it, you know, set it up to shoot any portraits in you know, somebody's house, outdoors. You can use it outdoors too. You can bounce sunlight in with it. You can do all kinds of fun things. Anyway, let's see what's going on in the comments here. And see what's up. Let's see here. And over to the comments. All right. Oh, oh, oh people are just saying hello still. I guess because I was over there, it was like people weren't really asking questions. Well, if you got questions about it, now's the time to do it. If you don't have questions about it, then we're going to wrap this thing up and get out of here.
Nice and easy show today. I, I think it's a really neat product. Uh, oh, one of the things I wanted to point out too, because it works beautifully with constant light, you can use this for video too. Right? Imagine if you're doing a kind of an interview or a talking head type of a shot, and you want to obviously make your subject look really, really good on camera, do a high key background, put this light under them, just really give them this beautifully lit look with just one or two lights and the eyeliner. It could be a lot easier than setting up a whole bunch of lights, three, four, five, six lights that you might need to have to get that light bouncing all over the place. Get the eyeliner in there for that talking head shot. You couldn't go real wide with it because then you'd see the eyeliner. But if you're doing a tight talking head thing, I think it could work out pretty well. Uh, Martin says, looks like a decent product. What price? That is a fantastic question. I have absolutely no idea. I always forget to check these things. Kind of important details, right? Let's see. Let me pull it up on b &H Photo. We will have a link down to this down below, of course. But because I don't remember what it was, let's just check it out here. We go eyeliner, $2.99. So it is not a cheap product. But if you are doing lots of portraits, I think it's well worth it. Um, you know, that's pay for that with one or two portrait sessions and away you go. So I like it. I think it's pretty cool. Oh, thank you, Ryan, for getting the price on that. And I don't have my ears in. That's right. Because, yeah. Anyway, that's that. Nice, quick, easy show. I'm going to wrap this thing up and get out of here. Hey, everybody, have yourselves a wonderful weekend. Monday's show, let's do a quick little thing on that because I do have a title card up for that. Monday's show is going to be another simple one here. Monday's show is going to be about the remote cable, the remote USB cable, OSO, whatever it's called. Anyway, a cable that you can use to connect your remote for your DJI Mavic or Spark or whatever you're using to your phone instead of using a Wi-Fi connection between the phone and the controller. I've got one. I think it works great. So I'm going to show that to you, tell you how to hook it up, how to get it running. And that's about it. Really simple one. Okay. Anything else in the, uh, in the questions here? Martin says, comes in black and white. Well, the pictures do. I'm not quite sure what you mean there. But the pictures come in black and white if you set your camera to black and white. I think that's a trick question. And Bart says, you're liking the new thumbnails. Thank you. I'm having fun with the thumbnails. I know there's not really a real consistency other than picture and big blocky text, but, you know, they got to be seen on YouTube. That's how it works. All right, guys, that's it. I'm out of here. Have yourselves a fabulous weekend, and we'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.